subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates our honorable home minister had to come here in the morning and we were all waiting for his coming but there was some very urgent task for which he couldn't come and he has sent his best wishes for this conference and he has also asked me to convey to all of you that is he is keeping a very very close this thing about the nis activities and he is quite satisfied about the good work that you are doing but he still feels that there is plenty that can be done and there are greater challenges that lay ahead for you well friends since i have come here on a very short notice but this is a subject and to be much stew is just being within the family so i can talk to you what i feel about the whole thing so the first question that comes to my mind is that why are we here why are we all of us in this room what are we doing here a terrorism is nothing new all of us have talked about it there's a very special purpose and i think it's a very very important purpose. and i must compliment the nia for having organized it i think that this was the first time that we are talking about certain things which whose import though felt was not operationalized and now it is being operationalized you know to fight terrorism is a very abstract idea it's a concept it is a thought there is nowhere as terrorism that you fight any thought concept philosophy that has to be countered needs its being split into an action plan adjectives have to be changed into the nouns and verbs you take action only in nouns and you take your actions are only in the form of verbs so actually you don't fight terrorism directly you degrade terrorism by fighting the terrorist by stopping his funding by taking away his weapons by foiling his plans by defeating and degrading his capabilities to bleed you and his basic intention to terrorize the civil society you know the victim of a terrorist is not the people that they kill because they are dead already how can the dead bodies are not terrorized anymore it is the people who live to see those deaths who are terrorized and when the civil society is terrorized the pressures are built on the government and so the governments can be made to change their policies and appease the terrorists or concede to what their needs and requirements are or what their demands are and this is what has to be denied to them and in this denial actually we think that there is only one action involved that is we fight the terrorists on the streets or in the encounters or in the jungles or in the ravines and thereafter we kill them no that is a very very mistake in this thing terrorism is fought under three different silos and all these three are most important the first and the most vital is to know who is the terrorist what is he planning who are his targets where is he getting his weapons where is he stored them who is giving them money who are the overground supporters which are the countries if at all there are any foreign sponsor terrorism and we know that today terrorism is one of the phenomena that is supported and gets its support and sustenance from the sources abroad so it is very important first to know about terrorism that is a, a wide field and a branch by itself but then the point is this the knowledge is not sufficient what do we do with that knowledge so we have to take action on that knowledge and then it is the terrorist that we try to degrade we try to neutralize it is their weapons that we try to seize it is their sanctuaries that we try to destroy it is their training centers and others that we try to target so the whole gambit of activities that go in the field of what we call as a physical action but it doesn't end here there are large number of knowledge that is left and the evidence that is left that has got to be taken particularly in a democracy to the court of law and we have got to find that what action we can take is those people who are either left out who have been uh, providing them shelter support ideological guidance and also 
some of them who have been the active members of these terrorist groups. This is the most important aspect which in the long run finishes terrorism. Proactive and a preventive intelligence only leads to your taking the counteractions that will minimize their activities or that will be able to contain the degradation that are the harm that they can do. Physical action only counters what is present. But what is future ultimately is decided by what the investigations in these cases are do, what in the court of law we are able to see, and we are able to establish them as the criminal. And this is what we are here for. We are here to... One of the problems of fighting terrorism is this, that these three zeros do not merge with each other. They work not in tandem, but to work separately, even when they work very, very efficiently, what the army might be doing in uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, JNK, and probably what RNAW might be doing, or IB might be doing in some other theatres, and what the NIA might be doing, probably where is the connect? And most importantly, what all of you are doing in your respective states, what all of you are doing in your respective states, that is the most important thing because you are the first respondents. You are the first people actually who face at the cutting edge level that terrorism. You are the one who fight it and who also bear the brunt of it. And the responsibility of saving the civil society lies squarely on your shoulders. And that is the main target of the terrorists. So the role of the states is extremely important. And here, in the next two days, what I would expect, and I am very sure that with a lot of very stalwarts and very experienced people here, try to focus on what is there that we can contribute to each other. When you work in convergence and you complement each other, you're, it is not something that you add to each other, you multiply, your that becomes a force multiplier and not a force additional. It does not only add to your this thing, it multiplies it. I am very happy that most of the states are now having their ATS and the STFs and other specialized things who have got the dual advantage. And that was my own view for a very long time. That is, could there be that the country could have one single counter-terrorist agency which could have all the three components integrated and merged with that, but for some reasons that <coughs> hasn't happened. But in the states, your STFs are collecting some amount of the intelligence also, and they are taking physical action, and if they can contribute also to the investigation of the cases, probably that will help. Now I'll tell you how it is important. And I won't take too much time because you are all experienced officers, you understand. Actually, the process of investigation or the evidence starts getting collected right from the time when the intelligence people are collecting their intelligence, either through the physical sources or through the uh, technical sources or through the human assets. The only thing is this, for the sake of the success of the operation and secrecy, it cannot be shared. But the fact that they have got to be made like this thing, that this is a very potential source of evidence at some stage. If one of my source brings about, brings a diary to me, and in which he shows all the details of the plans and the numbers and the, the telephone numbers and connectivity, probably I think it is my um, uh, uh, seized property or it is my property, uh, the thing like that, and I work on that. We do not think it has got a great evidentiary value sometime, and it has got to be utilized in what way it can come, how it will this thing, that will have to be seen. But anyway, that's only preliminary. But thereafter, even when the physical action takes place, there is plenty on the scene, which either gets destroyed or ignored. There may be some papers, there may be diaries, there may be computers, there may be some uh, um, uh, documents, even some uh, clothes that they are wearing, some stains of blood, many things. That probably could be this thing, which I destroyed or something like that. By the time it really reaches to those people in the police station who have to do the investigation, probably they are not also that well uh, trained about the investigative practices, that is, they are not able to do this thing. And then by the time it comes to your specialized branches, maybe SDF or the crime branch in the States or to the NIA, actually much of the evidence has been lost. So it is very important that the uh, uh, that uh, uh, this aspect of it, that the investigation also is also the most and the final 
this thing on which we have to fight and defeat terrorism. But this also has got another point. Let the people sitting in, the, in this room talking about terrorism not think that they are only investigators. They are soldiers against terrorism. You are as much, whether you are posted here or you are posted in the uh, BSF or ITPP or CRP or any other organizations fighting terrorism anywhere. You just change your uniform and you do that. You have got to take in that spirit that as your task is not only conforming to the, uh, or, or going, I'm not telling that go do the illegal things, but what I'm trying to say is this, look at the problem as that you are the important combatants of the fight against terror. And therefore, it is as much in your interest to see that lashkar e or Hijbul Mujahid, Mujahideen, or jaish e Mohammed is degraded and finished, and it's not only the intelligence agencies or the district agencies who probably are this thing about it. You see, I am bothered only about my case. And my case number 39 by, 70, by 18, which of the police station such and such, crime number such and such, its conviction or this thing, that is my aim. That is not only your aim. Your aim is much beyond that. Because there are many other things which are connected to that. Do you know the impact that the NIA has been able to make on the Kashmir terrorism is more than any other agency could have been able to do in the recent this thing. Tremendous uh, contribution of theirs. The way that they went against the money cases, the money laundering cases, the separatists, the various people and others. Now they took it in the right spirit, that is, through the legally permissible methods and the, with the proper processes and the procedures, they have followed the cases very diligently and very intelligently and they have pursued the matters, which has put the pressure at the right places. Now, persons who were the masonries or the persons who were being paid by the foreign agencies, they probably had to control their activities or stop their activities to some extent. But their efforts have not abandoned their continuing and therefore the challenge continues. Now, why is it a challenge? It is a challenge for three reasons. After all, you know, it's like any other crime. At the end of it, when NIA uh, uh, investigates a crime, it is like any other crime, which is, it may be a heinous crime, but it is a crime. So what makes it specially challenge, a special challenge? First is this, that the terrorism in India, and also in many parts of the world, here in India, it is a state-sponsored terrorism. Now, when I say state-sponsored, it is not only that they provide recruits, they provide training, they provide weapons, they provide ideological systems, they give them intelligence, they say the target terrorists, no more than that. They also give them the higher degree of deniability and the resources and the technology by which the investigation agencies are not able to figure them out or degrade them or find their tentacles because that can seriously impair and uh, weaken the movement. So the state sponsorism, you know, it is just like if a criminal, as it is a dreaded criminal, or somebody powerful is supporting. When some powerful people start supporting, a state starts supporting the criminals, and some of the states have mastered their, their this thing in that. And here, in our case, the Pakistan has made it as a part of its, uh, as an instrument of state policy. So that makes it a very great challenge. The second is the technology. The accessibility of the, of the high technology makes the evidence and collection of evidence very, very difficult or more complex. The third is the approach of the judiciary is to treat the terrorism cases at par with the cases of uh, ordinary crimes. They apply the same benchmarks and the standards. Building up the evidence, you know, for example, say in a case you can get many eyewitnesses. Where do you bring the eyewitnesses in, in terrorism cases? Firstly, there are very few eyewitnesses. These are not the this things that are done. And secondly, who will dare himself and take the this thing of it? He, his family, his, this thing, it is very, very difficult for any ordinary um, citizen to come in the court of law and uh, uh, depose against a uh, dreaded Jashia Mohammed or Lashkar e Toiba terrorist. So these are the things which makes it the great challenge and that's why I compliment all of you and I compliment the NIA that they have withstood this challenge and have been able to bring about those successes and glories in the future of it. But what is going to the future? Are these challenges going to become less or more or has, we have reached a plateau and we can probably 
um, uh, get satisfied that, well, whatever has happened has happened and now we are probably pretty well. No, certainly not. Actually, it's just, uh, uh, just a beginning of a much more difficult period. What is happening is this, that wars are increasingly becoming cost ineffective instruments of achieving your political or strategic objectives. Nobody can afford the wars these days because they are they're, they're cost ineffective. They are very, very expensive, not only in terms of the money, but also in terms of the lives that would be lost. But the most important thing is that you are not sure of the victory. In, even in spite of the fact that you have got a superiority in, number, in terms of your resources, in terms of your weapons, in terms of your technologies, you are not very sure whether the Americans with all their strength could uh, get what their political or military objectives were in Vietnam or the Soviets could get it in Afghanistan or the Americans. So it is no guarantee for them. So increasingly the reliance from the instrument of war is to instrument of covert action. And in the instrument of covert action, terrorism, and it's not only the terrorism, terrorism is only one of the manifestations of the covert action that the adversarial powers will be using against you. It will take many forms and it is taking many forms. We can talk about it at some other point, but here we are talking about terrorism. But terrorism is one of the important ones. It is a low-cost, sustainable option. And it bleeds the enemy much more than probably even the war. And it can do it over a prolonged period. So therefore, as the world becomes more complex, as there are uh, more um, uh, strategic, geological, uh, um, uh, geopolitical complex relationships that emerge, and wars become not an option to achieve it, that you will you'll find that there are increasingly the use of terrorism. And when that will happen, if we have to defend ourselves, the responsibilities on all of you will be much greater. So what to do? I think this is what should be the focus of your conference here. Come out with some specific, doable, uh, something within the time frame that, that can be done with the timelines, who should be doing what. What is there that we want the government to do in the ministry? What is that at the policy level we want to change? What is at the executive level in terms of your training, in terms of your equipment, in terms of your uh, resources, in terms of your connectivity? For example, I think one of the important things is how do you bring about greater convergence? And this convergence is between the center and the state, between the different um, uh, organs of the, of the people who are fighting terrorism, including, for example, for that matter, the media. The media is a very, very important organ to fight terrorism. Why do terrorists kill? You know, as Margaret Thatcher had said, that if the terrorists take action and the media is quiet about it, terrorism will end. They do it for publicity. Because then only you can terrorize people. If ten people are killed somewhere in a very gruesome way and nobody comes to know about it, nobody is terrorized. When somebody's son is kidnapped and then killed while going to school by a terrorist, then a mother who is probably 500 miles away from there, she gets terrorized, could it happen to my son also? But if he doesn't know about it, it doesn't happen. Is it that is we have to change our media policy, we are more transparent with them? Tell them and take them into confidence. Since we can't tell them many things, and since we don't tell them many things, they probably speculate and at times give us the information and carry the information, which creates more which creates terror in the society rather than uh, prepare the society to fight terror. So the perception management is also an important part. There are many other aspects that you will have to see. Is there that anybody who is dealing with the terrorism, there has got to be somebody authorized and trained to, in to interact with the media and let them be first to give their idea, or give their facts of what exactly had happened and in what way it has happened, why it has happened and what can be done and what the government is doing about it. Probably they will be very supportive. Whenever you have taken them into confidence, they are very, very supportive. Because they want the society to know the right thing. Everybody has known that the bomb blast has taken place. And they say, if you don't give them any figure, well, they think that probably 500 have died. You tell them, no, only 2 percent have died. Yesterday there was, I think, one a uh, small infectious blast which actually couldn't take place. It was on the <coughs> CRP, this thing, probably it had gone about 200 meters away ahead. 
before the blast physically took place. So there is a, there is a, this thing about this media policy or something. Similarly, working in the different silos, probably what can be the other change in their standard operating procedures. That is, in case there are intelligence reports, is it that the part of this uh, intelligence reports are shared with the concerned states and the things like that in a way that they can operate and prepare themselves for that. Similarly, about the use of technologies, building about your um, uh, data banks, sharing of the data banks. I hope that now that the new grid is coming up and now that there's greater connectivity among the police forces, that will improve the matter. Also, the legal empowerments. Well, some of the things have been done, and I have been given some legal empowerments by the government, and the government is quite determined and committed to do everything possible to make it as strong an agency as possible. Probably there may be something more that you people coming from the field might be thinking could be useful. Probably in your day-to-day -day working in fighting terrorism as the police officers, you might be thinking that, well, certain amount of the empowerments 